it is family ministry time and we got my mom we got my dad we got priscilla crystal myself my brother's not here but we miss him but we want you to see our conversation my mom has a facebook live going on so come on in i think you'll enjoy it We're so glad you're here. We're going to be talking about serving together in ministry. It's going to be a great real time. How do you feel serving with your family? How has it been? I'm sure it's been exciting and a joy. And just no trials, no troubles. Just, just wonderful. Uh, but just anyway, like share with us. Being in heaven, I mean, it's just exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, now get real. How has, how has it been? No, well, it's exciting. It, it's exciting. First of all, we got to start with you because before there were kids, there was you. So um, uh, I'm very grateful for the input that you've had, the guidance, the sacrifice, the support that you've given uh, because before the kids came along then uh, uh, you were you were the you were the mainstay for both the church and the urban alternative so it starts with you but then as the kids came along and uh, just kind of grew in a ministry environment we never like forced them into ministry right. but they were always yeah. around it yeah. and so it kind of naturally caught on I think in each of their uniquenesses so it's, it's exciting. It's exciting that they love the Lord, that they love the word, mm. that they love each other, that we stay connected as a family yeah. and uh, that they're using their giftedness in their own area of uh, interest, expertise and um, and usefulness to the Lord. I'm excited that they're serving along with us at the same time using their own uniquenesses right. in their own sphere of ministry. So it's kind of a, a great combination. Yeah, because yeah. it's hard work. Yeah. To, to, to invest in your kid's life and be consistent with it, you know? So I think that that table is very important Absolutely. for a family. Sit around that table, find out what they're doing in their world, in their lives. That's how we found out a lot of things from you guys, even those that are tuning in today. Being around that table, even the business of life, um, yep. it's very important, don't you think? That's one you thing, guys I, that's do one that thing now. I kept, definitely. Okay. That's one thing I kept, Monday through Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Monday yeah. through Thursday, we're at the table. And what are some, table, what are some things you dinner. do? What are yeah. some things so you we, other we, than there? We have devotions and I do interactive devotions. So we play games and I do skits and ah. stuff to make them laugh because they won't pay attention otherwise it'll be right. a food fight. And so I do do stuff like that yeah. and then we do highs and lows. And oh. so we talk about uh -huh. each kid goes around and says what their high was for the day right. and what their low was for the day. I'm hoping they remember that like right. I remember that. Mm, because that, we all, when we get interviewed or anything is going on, we're yeah. all talking about, man, that table, we were kind of mad at the time because we were sure. missing the shows that we liked. Right, right. <laughs> but now that we look back, we're like, that's the, that's the one major thing that we all remember like this. You know, yeah. How has the parenting of your parents influenced the way you parent? And then is it similar or different? Okay. I think that there are some things that I do um, that were daddy specific. And I think yeah. there's some things that I do yeah. that are mommy specific. Um, Karis, my oldest, who's 27, yeah. tells me that she one of the things that benefited her a lot was that we talked about a lot of things okay. and daddy did a lot of talking. Yeah. Yeah. There are some very specific things I um, recall having strong boundaries. When my kids are younger, yeah. I do a lot less talking. The oh. boundaries are really clear when they're older. Okay. I do a lot more talking, but I'll never forget when I was a teenager and there was something I wanted to do, so a group of kids I wanted to go out with, and I asked you could I go and I just knew uh, you were going to say no. And you actually said, I may have been 15 or 16 at the time, mm -hmm. you said, well, I'll leave it up to you. And like that marked me that at a certain point, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. really be intentional about giving your kids to make decisions. And so that's yeah. something specific that I can recall that I took from you, that there's, there's a time for stringent boundaries, right. there's a time for conversation, mm -hmm. and there's a time to let them make decisions because it's better for them to fail in your home right. than outside of your home. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think a combination of, of both. Right. And I love what Isaiah 59, 21 says, that it's a generational thing. So start where you are. You might be the first generation mm -hmm. to start sitting at a table and reading from the kingdom devotional book with your family and praying. But start where you are because you're probably the first generation to do it. And then your son will do it. So we started, to daddy probably started he did. in your family. That's right, because right, my father's <laughs> father didn't do it. Right. But my father started it passed it to me, right. we passed it to y'all, so you start where you yep. are, don't yep. look at where you aren't, 
Look yeah. at where you are. There is no screens on in our house During Monday through Friday. Yeah. Oh, wow. There is no screens. Right? None. No, because you have to be creative. They're like, well, I'm bored. Well, ball up some tape and play catch. <laughs> you got to figure out a way. You, you, gotta, you have to figure okay. out a way to be creative. And they or you'll figure, never it figure it out. Yeah. They, they figure it out. They figure it out. And they, they get out. happy. That's very good. Once they get used that to it. Boredom so is a gift that yes. children are being robbed of today. I What's think. that? Said again? Boredom, boredom is, is a gift that children are being robbed of today. Because without boredom, you never reach into your imagination. Did you take that from one of my sermons? Yeah. No, I didn't take it from one of your sermons. Because it sounded impressive. Yeah. Well, what? Does that mean I have to steal it from daddy if it's impressive? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all do it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, imagination is a muscle that has to be developed. Ooh. And so, Ooh. Another, one. <laughs> another one. Another one. So I'm just saying, if they don't have the time to do that, yeah. then they don't have they don't have that practice. So that's well, how we do it. Really so during okay. the week, it, they right. know that there is no TV. So the so bottom line is you have to be intentional yeah. about parenting, be, be intentional about ministry, be intentional about your life because it's a gift. There's no perfect dynamic that mm. is going to guarantee you mm -hmm. kids that whatever that okay. are, you know, doing because I feel like in fact right now I know some parents who are in your stage of life right now. Right. And they are so saddened because mm -hmm. their children have made choices. I mean, they okay. raised them in youth group. They did right. devotions mm -hmm. around the table. Yeah. All of that. And now as as in their 20s and heading towards 30s, their kids are making choices that are so out of alignment with the way they raised them right. and it's devastating for them because they did it right right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. isn't there some mm. sense of relief that needs to give all of us that we can just you know do our best right but you know god knows the man you married he knows the woman you married he knows the children that you had mm -hmm. he knows the dynamic they're being raised in right. and you just have to do the best you can and then go you know what lord that's why I'm gonna stay on my knees and ask you to take That's fill it. in all these gaps because mm -hmm. I can only do what I can. Yes. And that brings to the point that you need to ask God to bring an influence into their life, whether mm -hmm. it's you or somebody else. Because yeah. God has a million different ways of hitting a bullseye with a crooked stick. Yeah. Right. So if they've gone crooked, then you need God to, to, to create a wind to blow them back around That's to right. where they ought to be. But the good news is if you put something in them, yeah. you've created a bungee cord. Mm -hmm. And when you create that bungee cord, there's a basis for them bouncing back. Well, thanks for joining me today. It's been really a thrill. Been good. To have you here in this kind of format, in this kind of setting. All right. And not around the dining room table. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to. Thanks for having us. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys did a good job, as usual. Thanks for being here. And I hope yeah. you had a wonderful time. I hope you enjoyed our time today. I hope you were able to gleam something that helps you and your family, because that's what ministry is all about. We're all about making sure we represent him, as I said earlier, and also making sure that we really are helping you in your walk and your journey with the Lord and your walk and journey here in life, period. Um, so thanks for giving us the opportunity. Thanks for giving us the privilege. It's truly, truly a joy.